Hello guys and welcome back to day 7 of uh, 100 Days of Code. My name is Tyler Potts and today we are making, well, this woohoo little snake game uh, that, um, oh god sorry I missed, I wasn't even concentrating there, I swear. Um, a little snake game where you collect the, uh, you, you collect apples as they are called normally in snake, but in ours it's a yellow block. Maybe I should have done the colours the other way around. It would be more like apple and snakes and sort of thing. Oh yeah. You know, it's the first time I've... Ah, oh, I was about to... Ah, oh, jinx. <laughs> oh no. I was about to tell you, it's the first time I've ever done this good at it, but... Um, well, I killed myself pretty quickly, but I'm getting good practice at this. But anyway, guys, let's get straight into it. I um, know you guys are eager. I'm eager. Let's, let's, let's do it. So let's go here first. Let's uh, cancel. Oh, shutting down gracefully. Please wait. Hello. Uh, force close. <laughs> force close. Ah, oh, that's not you clear. All right. So we are in our. Um, our directory here you can ignore these two this is the first one I made the one you just seen so that is there in case we need it and we get stuck but I doubt we will because I've already made it once and the videos here are for when I create our videos I just created I've started creating the directories early now um, so I, for starters I need to apologize that this video is late I know it is actually a few hours later from the day it should have been uploaded it is one in the morning right now I'm recording this so I know that but um so I do apologize, but I had a lot of things to do and I did I did create some content in here, but it what it wasn't good. It was when I created the reference and it, it wasn't it wasn't teaching, it was more of me just learning myself. But now I've learned it's time to teach. Um, so let's start off. So for starters we need to create index.html as usual. We're gonna create a boilerplate with emit, so we press exclamation mark tab or you can press enter to. And now in in the title, so the title of the uh, web page, we're going to type in Snake Game. Or we're, I'm actually going to name this Tyler Potts Snake Game because this is actually going to go on my website, and I've done that the wrong way around. It should be Snake Games Tyler Potts. Um, so next up, we well for starters, let's go into the body and. Uh, so we need to do a few things. So we're using um, HTML5 Canvas to um, draw and create this game. So how the game actually works, we will create HTML5 Canvas and we'll draw to this canvas. So we need to type in Canvas and we need a couple of things there. We need the width, which would be equal to 768 pixels. Um, and we need a height which we're going to set to 448 and there's a reason for this because we need these items to be able to divide by 32 because that's going to be our grid or our block size so 32 pixels by 32 so that gives us 24 on the width and 448 divided by 32 is 14 blocks of height in the height <laughs> so that is how that works and that is all we need this is it but we are going to create a couple of other things in here to make it a bit more fun so if we cut this quickly it's still in my uh, clipboard I'm gonna create a diff and paste that back in there so we've wrapped it in a diff we're gonna create h1 up here with a class off top and we're gonna say snake and we're gonna create another h1 with a class of bottom down here and we'll call this game and that is that so, but now Obviously, uh, that's not working no more. We actually need to restart our surfer. So I'm using a node module called Surf um, to run this. Um, you guys can use whatever surfer you like. If you want me to go over node modules, NPM packages, and that to install to your computer yourself so you can do this sort of thing yourself if you don't know how, um, then please let me know and we can do that in the uh, bomb. But now if we refresh this page, here we are, snake and game. That is, that's it. That's the story done, guys. Thanks. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's continue. So we actually need our assets folder. Inside our assets folder, we need our SAS folder. And inside our SAS folder, we need our main.sas. As you know, we use SAS for these tutorials because SAS is the master preprocessor. Don't quote me on that. Um, and in here, we need to create a reference to our new link. But as we know, we will be it will be compiling down into 
um, it will be compiling back down into CSS. So you can do everything I do in the main SAS in CSS. You just need to know how to convert it because you can't do stuff, let's say, like body, canvas. Oh, that's CAFAS. You would have to separate these. To do this syntax in normal, um, you'd do body separately and then you'd do body canvas like so in normal uh, CSS. But again, this isn't a SAS store, so we're not going to go over it. Um, so we've created our reference. And now, as you see, it's generated a custom file with no CSS in there in a minute. Uh, we're going to actually go straight into the body and we're going to say margin of zero. And we are going to say, uh, we're going to go background. So we're going to use something called a linear gradient. And what a linear gradient does, is, well, you'll see, but basically it creates a gradient across. If we did two top left, so this says from this, go to the top left. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to create some variables quickly in uh, SAS. So I'm going to create a primary, which will be equal to AF1E2D, which is a lovely darkish red. And the secondary, uh, which will be equal to, um, or I say darkish red, it's not a dark red, but it's a not bright red either. And the secondary is going to be a slightly yellowy orange color. Uh, enough for one, <laughs> sorry, we do have a few variables and it will be AF, uh, no, it will be, 171717, one, seven. so really dark, dark color, nip close to black basically, and a light color which will be almost white as I call it. So they are those. So now in here we're going to say F7, uh, oh, it's F7, it's prime. Ah, oh, look at that, I'm not even using the variables or set primary, and we're going to say 0% for now, but that will be 50% in a minute. I just want to show you what this actually does. And that'll be a hundred percent. So now, if we went here and we, what the? <laughs> That's not how it should be. Why? Why is that like that? Um, we are using the right. We are. Where are we running this from? All oh, right, there you go. That was dodgy. So as you can see, it's like a linear gradient going across, but. We want to set this to 50% and this to 50%. So, bam, you see that sort of drag. And the reason there's two of them is because we haven't set the width and the height of this yet. So we need to say width 100 feet double. Well, the width doesn't matter, but the height does. We need to set the height to 100 feet h, which means viewport height. So whatever the size of your viewport here is, is what the height of the body will now be. Um, but bang, that's that done. Next up, we want to, so we're going to put those, but we're going to set this to display. And if you've guessed it, it is Flexbox because Flex is amazing. Uh, we're also going to say justify content center. So this census centers them on the X axis. And we're going to use a line item center to center, center the content on the uh, Y axis too. And now if we refresh, boom, so they are there. But that doesn't look that cool, right? That's not that cool. We need to do better. Um, also, just before we continue, we're going to say uh, canvas background, and we're going to say dark, just so it's there, just so we can see it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. That's cool. The, the background's cool. The game sort of view is not so cool. So let's get those variables required. So we're going to get h1, and we're going to say margin zero because we want it to get closer to the to the game object. We want to go. Uh, what do we want to say? So we've got margin zero, and then we want to set the font size equal to 72 pixels. This is what I, went, I think I normally up for. Boom. Um, and up in the body, we're also going to set font family, and we're going to say Helfetica sans serif. Just something simple like that. So we've got this nicer font. Um, I just want to check something, see if I've got it installed. I don't believe I do. Oh, I do. So we're going to use EXO instead and then Helfetica as a backup just in case, but that is that. Nice. Um, so it's looking slightly better, but let's be real, that's not cool. So we want to go AND TOP and we're going to say, well, uh, we don't need AND TOP right now. I don't think we actually have to change anything for AND TOP. That one is perfect as it is, but AND BOTTOM is going to set it to colour. I'm going to say LIGHT and we're going to say text align right so boom that goes over there with a nice lighter color and a dark color there so that is part of my styling 
Uh, next up, this, this this screen isn't looking how I want it, so we're going to change this. So from background, we're going to say border. Uh, we're going to say free pixel, solid, and light. Boom, so we've got a bit of extra there. Um, and we're going to say box shadow. Box shadow is awesome. Uh, we're going to say four, pic oh, four pixels, four pixels, 12 pixels, zero pixels. And we're going to say transparentize, and we're going to say dark. And we're going to say by 0 0.7%. Uh, so I can't barely see that, can you? No, nope, neither can I. So let's set this to maybe, wait, if we set that to 8 and that to 4, is that going to bring it out a bit more? Yeah, you can see it comes out a little bit more, but we want that on 12 still. There you go. You can see a slight shadow around it. If I remove that, and I refresh, you can see it disappears and it's not the same. But you don't want it to you don't want the shadow too much because that would be fairy cell, but we are gonna set that to a five because you know I like my I like my dark shadows. But yeah, there there you go, that is the design done. So I hope you like the design of it. It's what's gonna be on my website. This colour scheme is my new colour scheme too, so you guys get a front row seat to that. Um and that is that CSS is done, bam, that's all we needed. The hutch the um the HTML is almost gone, but we need to add a script source in there with assets, JS, and main.js, because that's where we're going to do in our script. And now we can close that file too. That is also done. Now in the assets, we want to create a new folder called JS and then a new file called main.js, as you probably already guessed. So there's a few variables we need to get. So first off, to use the canvas and draw on it, we actually have to get a reference to it, and we're going to call that uh, const, so we're going to create a constant variable which should ES6 syntax. But the reason we're using const is because we don't need to change uh, this value afterwards. And we're going to say query selector. So we haven't used query selector before, but query selector all it does is allows you to search for one item, it returns one item, uh, one element which is equal to it. So we could say canvas, and if we had so we're going to open up the index one more time, so it will get us this canvas. So if we go into this and we log and we say canvas there we go the canvas it instantly logs us the canvas because that is what it got but if we said if we had two canvases for example we're going to change them up a little quickly it's going to make probably break my thing but we'll say a class off um the real canvas look at that and then we or we refresh page, you can see it still only gets the first item. So what query reflects this, it gets the first item off, um, it gets the first item of which you select, if you get what I mean. So the first item it finds in the DOM, in the HTML, which would be this one, is the item that we'll get. We can also do stuff like this though, we can go dot, we can use a class name, so that will realize that is a class. Now when we refresh, it gets the second one because that's got the class of the real canvas and dot is the notation for uh, class and then it gets that. And again, it works for uh, it works for all sorts. It works for everything. So you can do query selectors on loads of different things. Um, but for now, we're going to use it basic and just go canvas and we're also going to remove the real canvas because that is not the real canvas. It lied to us, guys. If you, wanna, if you hate the real canvas because it lied to us, then let me know in the comments. Uh, so we've got... So Again, this isn't all we need to draw on the canvas. We might get it, but we might have got the canvas, but we also need to set its context. Um, and we're going to go const ctx. So this stands for context. And we're going to set that equal to canvas.getContext. And then we're going to set that equal to 2D because that is what we are... Um, that is what we are going to be doing our game in 2D. We don't want to do a 3D game or anything like that because I have no idea how to do that. But don't tell anyone. That's our secret, okay? Uh, so we're going to say const. And we're going to set a grid. So this is going to be the size of each cell in the grid. Um, and it's equal to 32. And then we need to create a count and set that to zero. This count is to do with the frame rate of the game. And you'll find out what we need to use this for later on. Um... And then we're also going to set up two more things. So two more things. Two more things. One is the colors. We'll say let and then secondary secondary is equal to uh, FFCE. So, so same as our um, SAS. 
so again this just setting up variables so this bit is so the next part is quite uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually move these quickly can I move, how do I move them in uh, 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 uh. control I forgot oh god I can't remember how you move them with the keyboard god what I'm so oh it's just oh oh wait hey there you go I figured it out guys you proud of me you hold alt and then press up and down whatever line you're on if you select multiple lines with shift you can move them using the alt key and the arrow keys just so you know quick shortcut for you because I heard someone say they wanted to like the shortcuts I heard I read I read I didn't hear I don't hear what you guys write or do I maybe I do but yeah so those colors are there so now anything under here we're just setting up the items which are crucial to the actual game now um, which would be so we need to actually create the snake so we need to create our play the playable ob the playable character which is a snake in this sort of game because it's called snake game yep um, and we need to set a few things up so first we need the the position of the X where this is actually roughly where it starts on the grid and we're gonna say grid um, so that is equal to 32 and I'm gonna say times 5 so it's gonna be five blocks of the grid in and Y is also gonna be grid times 5 so if you want to know what that is that is 160 5 times 32 if you don't believe me 5 times 32 is equal to 160 there you go now you believe me secondly we've got to set up the velocity so the how far well I say how fast how far the snake moves on the x and y axes per frame so in our case it's going to be vx which stands for velocity on the X, is equal to a grid. So it's going to move one grid block per frame. Secondly, we're going to say phi Y, and that is going to be zero, because we don't want it to be moved, we don't want to be going diagonal. If it's going at X and Y by 32, for example, it'd be moving completely diagonal on our page, which we don't want. We don't want it moving multiple uh, grids. So we do need another thing, we need cells, and this basically just tracks our cell. So how this tracks what cells we have. So we need to know the for each cell, because obviously a snake is made out of multiple snails, the more snake oh getting tongue twisted. The more cells uh, we create, it means they get put into here. So the X and Y of each cell will be put into here. Next up, we also need max cells, and we need to set that to four. So that means how many cells we can actually have right now. So this is actually the number of cells we start with, which is four. And each time we um, eat an apple, the max cells gets bigger, and that means the cell, the more cells grow. Um, and that is how that works. That's a semicolon next. We want to be strict with our code. Um, and the last thing we need to well, the last thing we need to set up a uh, variable we need to set up is the apple. So obviously, um, the apple is where what we use to um, eat. We eat it and we create. It. And this just needs to be the starting position, which is going to be grid times ten. So we're going to have it uh, ten away from our um, uh, well five away from our snake five grid blocks away from our six x and y you could also create this as a random one when it first spawns but i like to create the first ever time spawning to be the same position each time um we will update it so once we go in uh, we'll create our own sort of thing if you would like um so next up we need to create a loop so we need to create a function uh which is a loop we're gonna call it update because I um, I used to be a unity developer and they use update and start for their two methods well two main methods um, in C sharp so we're going to be using function update for this because I like the name of it and we actually need to set up a way of running this loop and with the HTML canvas element we can use request animation frame so what this does is oh, it's hard to explain without um, without knowing probably but request animation frame basically it runs every it runs 60 frames per one second and um, well tries to I believe that's how it works and we also need to, so this now we'll we'll go put a comment in this starts the game but it only runs this frame once so it'll run 60 frames once but we want to request anima every time this runs we want to make sure it runs again so that's where that comes in there 
Um, but we don't want it at 60 frames per second because that'll be really fast. Our character will be moving across the screen like wee, wee, wee. And that was my sound effects. Thank you. I, um, they're copyrights. So don't try and use my sound effects, please. Uh, so we're actually going to set counts. This is where count comes in from up here. We're going to set plus plus count. Um, if that is more than four, we're going to return. So we're going to come out of this function. So this basically means, so what happened, the reason we're using the number four here it's basically we're saying every four, f f four times frames to 60 divided by four is equal to 15 and we're setting the frames per second to 15. I know that qu might be quite confusing to you for now, but you'll understand the more we do canvas and the more we do frame rates and stuff, how that works. So basically what we're doing is dividing our 60 by four. So this, this, this update method will only run on every fourth run or every four every four frame, which means that it's 15 frames. It gets called 15 frames per second. So it will cancel itself out. Oh, and then underneath it, we have to set count is equal to zero. So once it gets to the fourth, once it gets to four, we set it back to zero. Um, and that is that. So that's how we sort of the frame rate and stuff. But now we need to start drawing. But before we start drawing, there's going to be an issue. If we start drawing right now, we so I'm going to show something. So we go fill rect. And we say, so as you can see, full rect is how we draw to the canvas. We'll draw a rectangle to the canvas. And it gives, you need to give it an X position, a Y position, a width, and a height. So we're going to say 0, 0, 500, no, uh, <laughs> 32, and 32. And we're going to also set the fill style, oh, fill style equal to, uh, or C, sorry, we need to use CTX dot. I forgot to mention that. So everything you do, it's to do with this context, which applies it to our canvas. And we're going to set that to primary. And now if we refresh the page, you can see it drew a red square there. If we move it along to, let's say, I'm going to say grid times five and grid time oh, times five. Oh, that was the height, weren't it? Oops, I was meant to move it, but that also works. So if we say now 32 from the edge and 32, 32 from the edge see as you can see how it kind of works there so that is how you draw to the canvas but to start with every frame as you saw that that's always there and that never moves and if we want to, if we move this rex if we it's hard to do it without actually creating an object or anything but basically if we started moving this it would paint a red line going across here and that would not be good because that means it's always there. So we need to clear the canvas before every single frame before we start drawing again. So we're going to go clear rect. And basically what we do here is we set uh, the X, which be zero. So we clear it from zero, zero. So the top, and then we say canvas.width, canvas.height. So what this does, this will clear it from the camp all the way from zero zero all the way to canvas width and height you could set this like 500 and you clear like half of the like if you could clear half of this all of it but now this will clear it all the whole canvas which is good um so next up we want to get our snake drawn okay so we want to so i'm just my fingers are really clicky we want to draw our um snake essentially and to draw our snake we need to do a few things and first we want to say ctx dot fill style and we're going to set the snake equal to primary secondly we're going to say we're going to go snake dot cells dot for each function cell index and pal so this is our function for each cell um, we will then draw each cell in here which we ctx dot fill rect and we'll say cell.x, cell.y, grid minus one and grid minus one. So basically what we're saying is start at the cell.x and cell.y, which is going to be here, but obviously that's snake.x and snake.y, but we'll sort that out in a minute because we're going to, it's for each cell. Um, we're going to set at its position x and y, and we're going to go grid minus one, grid minus one. Um, but as you can see, that doesn't draw anything still. 
There's nothing being drawn because the issue is we haven't got any cells yet. So we need to actually create these sh cells. Sh I'm getting tongue twisted. These cells. <laughs> so now to do that, we have to go snake.cells.length is less than snake. Oh, snake.max cells. So basically we're saying, oh, wait, we didn't write an if. We're, sorry. We was, oh, max cells. And let's cut that and put that inside an if. Uh, that was actually meant to be inside of an if. Um, and we now need to say snake.cells.pop. So what pop does this actually remove? Uh, well, it'll say it removes the last element from an array and returns it. Um, so basically we're removing the last cell but before we actually have to create the cells right so to do that we need to go snake dot cells uh, dot unshift yes so unshift and then we're gonna say we're gonna pass this through an array or an object sorry and it's gonna be X so the cell X so um, this inserts a new element at the start of an array and basically what we're going to do is snake.x we're going to set it to the start of snake.x and y is equal to snake.y and what's happening here is we're going to create a snake or a part of the snake at snake.x and snake.y every single time uh, every single frame and then here this basically deletes one if it goes over the max cell. This seems a bit weird, it might seem odd to you, but basically what we're doing is creating and destroying our blocks, but keeping it at the max, the width for the max cells. Now if we refresh, you see a red block is one, but you see it's not really doing anything. And just to let you know, there is four blocks on top of each other there, because this would have ran more than four times and four blocks would have been drawn and it would have hit the max cells. But the issue with that is they're not moving, they're not doing anything, that's no fun, right? So in our code here, we need to create a moving script. So we need, to, it's really simple. It's literally two lines. One is snake.x, so we're setting the snake.x is equal to snake.vx. And then a second line, which would be phy and snake y. So basically what we're saying is snake.x is equal to snake.velocity of x. So whatever the speed we set here, which is grid, one grid block, it will move every frame now one block. And that means then it will create the first block, it will move one block by the second block, and then the second block will be in the right place, and so on. So now if we refresh, why are you up there? That's that's not right, but we... That's not right, that's not what you're meant to do. <laughs> uh, it's equal to... Oh, see, that's my bad. It's maybe plus equal to, so each time we're going to add velocity, we don't just want to sell it to velocity because that would not be right because as you saw it went up there. So now if we refresh now, boom, there we go. We've got our snake moving. Oh, but it's gone off screen. That is also an issue, guys. So <laughs> let's fix that too. So now in between the moving the snake parts or setting the snake.x equal to the snake.velocity, um, we are going to create an if statement called snake.x if it's more less if it's less than zero. So if it's if it goes behind if it goes left off screen, we're going to say snake dot oh, snake dot x is equal to canvas dot width minus the grid. So basically, we're going to say if it goes too far left, we're going to pull it all. We're going to then spawn it over the right side with canvas.width, so the width of the canvas minus one grid block so it's not off the screen, if if that if you get what I mean. And then we're also going to create an else if snake.x is more than or equal to canvas.width. So now if it's more than, if it goes over the uh, block, we're going to say snake.x is equal to zero. So if it goes further than the canvas width, we're going to bring it all the way back to the start. And that, my friend, is how we create a little looping, uh, little looping thingy, Bobby. Wee, wee, wee. Okay, sound effects again. Sorry, but we also need to do this again for the Y. So we just need to set that to Y, Y, and this to height because we're referring to the height. Now insert the width, height, and Y, and Y. So. 
that is the up and down canvas moving you could also by the way i know traditional snake when you hit the edge you die so you could just check for that so if you go past you'd say if it's more than if it's less than zero or if it's you'd say if it's more than canvas then you kill the snake but for this tutorial we don't need to do that uh, you'd say like you'd reset the game or something you create a reset game but first the only way you die is if you eat your tail because i'm i would die at loads if this that was the case i'm not good at game snake games um so basically now we've got the snake moving we want to create um well first we need to spawn the apple too so let's do the apple next i think so uh, where should we put the apple spawning? Just above here. We'll put it here. We're going to say, so this one is the actual uh, create snake. So this is actually the bit where actually for each snake it actually draws it. Or draw, yeah, let's call it draw snake. That was better. Draw snake. And we're going to put here draw apple. Although it's yellow. It's a golden apple. It's been surrounded by gold blocks. If anyone gets that reference, your childhood was fun, obviously. But for here, we're going to say ctx start fill style is equal to secondary. So we're going to set the the color of whatever comes below here to uh, to yellow to our yellow fill rect. So we're going to say fill rect, and the um, we're going to set the x position of the apple equal to the what we set at the top here in our object. So apple dot x and apple dot y. Um, it's going to be equal to, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, apple.y is equal to apple.y. I don't know what it's equal to. And then we're going to go grid minus one and grid minus one for the size. So, oh, I should explain. Sorry, I didn't actually explain what minus one did. So, as you can see, you can see there's, it's really hard to see, but there's a slight gap between each uh, square. And that is what minus one would do. If we didn't minus one, look, if I set this back to, it would look, like one whole um, one whole square, if you get what I mean. So it's like one whole rectangle, but we want a minus one. We want to see the difference so you can see how many blocks you have eaten and got. And the reason we do it for the apple, even though there's no point, it's just so it's the same size and there's no not even a pixel difference in the size. Um, so yeah, now we've got, the, we've got the apple in there spawning. But, oh, well, we can't use the key shit either, so... Um, I guess let's add the function to move next. <laughs> um, and to do that, we need to go down here and we're gonna say document dot add event listener. And we're gonna say key down. So every time you press key down, it's gonna listen for that. It's gonna get that event and we're gonna call it event. And we're gonna say if evt dot which, which stands for which key is equal to uh, 37 which is the left key and snake dot vx so the floss t is equal to zero so we're not actually so it's checking if we're not actually moving on the x because if we're moving on the x then this shouldn't be able to be called because you don't want to be able to go back on yourself so you start eating yourself from behind because uh, that would kill you instantly anyway um, we're going to say snake dot vx is equal to grid minus so if we press left key we start adding left on the grid which sends us backwards on the grid so that's why we do minus grid so it's minus the speed so we reverse the speed value. and we also want to say snake dot what or uh phi y is equal to zero because we want to set if it's going up and down we want to set it to zero so it doesn't start going diagonally and we're going to say else this so we're going to create some if statements here we could do us we could do a switch statement, but then we it would be difficult to check if we're already heading in one direction, and we don't want to do that. So if evt dot which is equal to thirty eight, which is the up arrow, I believe, we'll find out when we start going backwards and pressing the wrong keys and going the opposite direction we thought we were going to go. But yeah, it's the up arrow, and we we'll set that equal to zero again. So if we're not moving on the y already then we can say snake dot oh not snail snake dot phi y velocity y is equal to grid or minus grid so because we'll, if we're pressing up we're going to go backwards on the grid because the actual grid x zero on the x and y is up here so unlike traditional 
uh, X and Y, so normally go X there and Y up there, but it's the opposite way. The X goes in the same direction, but the Y does not. Then we're going to say X or phi X, so velocity X is equal to zero, because we also want to do the same there. And now we want to do this again, and um, oh, this needs to be else if, and we're going to say if if I get it right, event.which is equal to, if you guessed it, 39. And and snake, so 39 is the right key, if you didn't guess that. So it goes up, wait, no, it goes left, up, right, and then obviously the next one will be down. Uh, dot phi x is equal to zero, because it's still... We want to check if we're moving on the we end move, we'll ch we're checking if we're not moving on the x-axis. Um, if we're not moving on the x-axis, that means we can move on the x-axis <laughs> or switch direction to it. I'm going to say snake dot x is equal to grid. So this sets it going back in the right direction. And snake dot y is equal to zero because we want to set the velocity back to zero. And one more, we're going to say, we're actually going to highlight this because I can't, I don't have to write it over and over again. And now we're going to say this is 40, which is the down, or yes, the down arrow. Uh, zero, and we're going to say phi y is equal to grid, and phi x is equal to zero. So that, this is now set up. So now if we go in here, and we can start moving, oh... What happened there? If I, I've done one wrong, haven't I? So 37 and snake velocity x. Uh, <laughs> that should be phi x and not phi y. Someone knows that, didn't they? So now we can go all the way around. Yeah, but if we get the apple, as you see, we just go over it, which isn't good. We need to get the apple, right? So, in our draw snake bit, we also need to do some checks. And we do the checks if cell.x is equal to apple.x and cell, so this cell we're currently, it's currently iterating over it, y is equal to apple.y. So if we're basically, one of our cells is on top of the apple, we're going to say snake.max cells plus plus. So we're going to make our Mac, we're going to make ourselves bigger. And um, we're going to go apple.x is equal to, we need to create a function here called get ra random int. And we're going to say its minimum is zero and its max is 24 times the grid. Oh, grid. And the reason we've used 24 here is because that's how many blocks there. So if we have 7, 6, 8 divided by 32, that is equal to 24. And a height of our thing is 48 divided by 32, which means our y here will be equal to 14, because that is how many blocks of the grid we can make with 32 pixels downwards and right, because we move in 32, which is the grid. So we need to create this function called get random int. So we're going to say function get random int, and we're going to say min and max, and we're going to return math.floor, so this turns any number, so if we did 0 0.5, that would return 1, because it converts floats into whole numbers. And we also need to do math.random, and we're going to say, uh, how do we do this now? So it is, it is random, oh yeah, so math.random returns a random number between 0 and 1, so it's, it could be 0 0.23, it could be 0 0.5, it could be any random number. Um, but we would then want to times that by our max minus our min. I know our min is um, 0, but in the future it could be, it could be our, um, we could want to add 1 to the min, so it can only spawn one block over and stuff, and basically this helps with that. And we're going to say plus min at the end of this, even though it's zero again. We could literally just times it by max, so it could be any number between there. But this this is if we want to change this to be one or two, so it actually puts the object in the right place. And basically, once we eat the apple, this is just going to give it a random position. So now if we refresh and we move around, hey, we get bigger. Uh, 
Uh, can I get it? <laughs> but now, as you saw then, if I eat myself, I don't die. So that is the last part. Wow, I've never had the apple go in the dead corner before, but there we got it. Um, um, yeah, so next up, we need to make sure when we eat our tail, we reset the game. Um, so if we go down here and we say four, so we're going to create another for loop. We're going to say let i equal index. So the index, so whatever position in the array this is, plus one. Um, so then we're going to say i snake dot cells dot length i plus plus. So basically, what we're saying if because the first one obviously the first in the first index is going to be the first cell. Sorry. It's going to be the one which collides because we're not going to be able to collide the back of us with us, if that makes sense. The head is always going to hit something first um, in the snake because the body follows the head in this sort of game. Um, so that's why we're doing the index of the array or whatever cell we're on plus one because it can't be zero because that would be the head. And if we're colliding with ourselves, that's going to cause us some issues. So now if we go cell.x is equal to snake dot cells i dot x so we're saying the x axis on the cell we're currently looping through is e and uh, it's equal to that and dot y is equal to snake dot cells i dot y so if we're on the same axis so if we got cross over one of our cells from our head we're going to say window dot location Dot reload. You could do other things from reload. You could reset the position of everything and set everything back to how it was originally and then create an end state or something where it goes into an end game and click restart the game. We're going to reload because we just want the game to start from scratch again and I don't want to have to reset everything because that can cause issues and bugs which um, I don't have time to fix today. Um, so that, I believe, that is our game complete now. So we get that first one. We get the second one. Oh yeah. Now if we try and kill ourselves, boom, the game restarts. And you could create like a score and a high score in this. Um, or anything really. So you can create whatever you want now from here on. But the world's yours to create like a custom game. Maybe add so your snake can shoot and it's bad guys or something. I don't know. That's probably really complex. But I did teach you that part. But <laughs> maybe in the future we can do something like that. Create our own spin on it. But for now, it's just a basic snake game. And I know a lot of people have already done this on YouTube, but, you know, it's me. I do my thing maybe slightly differently to everyone else. Um, so, uh, that is good. But I feel like we need a... We, we need a current score, so how many blocks we've actually created. So we're going to create... We're going to create a uh, score right now. So we're going to go back to the top and we're going to undercount. We're going to say, let's score equals zero. And we're going to create an item. Uh, no, we're going to do it in in the actual thing. So we're going to draw the score. So we're going to say when we eat an apple, here we are. We're going to say uh, score is plus plus. And how do we want to do the the uh, how do we draw? frame it means if we get a score it updates it so yeah let's do it in there um, uh, I think we need to use fill text so if we go back to the top just under ca under clear rec uh, canvas we're gonna go uh, fill text is it fill text or no? We want to fill text. We want to go fill text or no? We need to go ctx dot font is equal to and we're going to say forty two pixels x o two maybe or we're going to stay healthetica because we know that one's going to work and we're going to say ctx dot fill text as you can see there and this takes three arguments. It takes a string which we're going to say we're going to say score. We're gonna, it takes a position, so we're going to say grid, oh god, how do we do this? So grid, 
no, we'll say canvas dot width divided by two, and we'll say canvas dot height divided by two, and that should center it. I'd probably not perfectly. Um, and can we set the stroke color? Um, it should be fill style ctx dot fill style is equal to. Uh, we haven't set this up yet, so we'll just go do that here. Fill style is equal to that, and we're going to say ctx dot text align. That's something I remember now, and that is going to be set to center. So our text should now be center. Hey, so it goes up when we get a score. And you could set this to local storage and then set a high score and whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm Also, as you see, when we go under this, it actually covers it and we don't want that. As you see, when we hit as well, we want it actually, to, we're going to move this position of this lower down in the code underneath the draw snake and we're going to say, draw score and we're gonna put that in there so now if we go if i can even get to it wait let's just level it once <laughs> i can't i'm not now i want to get there i can't get there <laughs> oh no ah there you go so as you see we go under it now so it's kind of like under we could probably make that bigger as well if we went in here and we set it to 72 and i don't know if you could do transparent color i'm gonna quick let's google that uh Fill text canvas transparency. Can we add it? How to change the opacity of an element in a canvas element? There we go. Down here's fill style. Oh, we can use RGBA. It'll work with everything but images. images so that one works for images there if you want to know but let's close that I, I kind of wanted the effect to be 72 and then this to be oh feel that hasn't take oh we've got a hashtag there still yay let's kind of I highlight to be even quieter so it's not like there so there you go so now look at that that's a cool style game right guys that is absolutely awesome. Anyway, guys, we're going to let our snake... Uh, come on, give me that last one. Oh, come on, let me have the last one. Yeah, we're going to let our snake go back and forth for now while we do our outro, guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, leave a comment in the description of what you enjoyed and maybe something I can improve on. So I am, I am, I'm, I'm not going to blast at you or anything if you say oh your code is terrible or you've done this wrong or you could have done this better because I can I, and I need to learn myself I'm trying to teach people but at the same time people can be teaching me so again that is always welcome uh, but anyway thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed it please leave a like if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button because we are uploading daily for the next 100 days although some days I may accidentally upload at one in the morning not on that day but the day after so I apologize like today but again I apologize <laughs> I do try to get it out daily I record them daily it's just sometimes I don't like the video I record and I want to record it again and that leaves me with no time because I do work full-time day job but anyway this isn't about that this is about a goodbye so everyone thank you for watching and leave your feedback in the comments peace out people